The First Qin Emperor When we read history, we often want to learn about who was good and who was bad. Sometimes it is easy to say that someone in history is good or bad, but history is about real people. Real people sometimes do both good things and bad things. Qin Shi Huang was the first emperor of the Qin Dynasty, China's first empire. He built some of the greatest symbols of ancient China and its culture. But by doing this, he destroyed the lives of many of his people. Yet he and his family, his dynasty, ruled China for only a short time. This is his story. Powerful and Rich Thousands of years ago, different parts of China were ruled by different kings. These kings were always at war. Each king wanted to rule all the other kings and their lands. In the year 221 BC, King Ying Zheng won the last war to control these other lands. He became Emperor Qin Shi Huang. He helped his people by building water systems for farming and many roads. The emperor and his government were very powerful and rich. They had many palaces. They may have had over 270 palaces. Even when the emperor was not at a palace, many servants and ministers were still busy there. Every palace always looked like the emperor was there, so most people never knew where he was. That way, the emperor was safe from attack. A Wall for Soldiers Qin Shi Huang was powerful, but he knew that he had enemies. He was afraid his enemies would attack him. The emperor needed to send many soldiers farther west up the Yellow River to watch for foreign invaders. The soldiers needed high towers from which they could watch for attacks. The emperor decided to build a long wall with many watchtowers, which became the Great Wall. Today, people from all over the world like to visit the Great Wall for sightseeing, but building it was grim. Emperor Qin made people who lived near the wall build it for no pay. The emperor also sent prisoners from other parts of the empire to build the Great Wall. It was very hard work, and many people died. Some historians think that one million people died in the first nine years of building the Great Wall. Burning Books Emperor Qin was a man who liked to control his world. One day, one of Emperor Qin's ministers named Han Fei told the emperor and another minister, Li Shi, that people were criticizing the emperor. Han Fei said that people got ideas from books and were saying bad things about the emperor. Li Shi wrote a law that within 30 days, everyone would have to give their books to the government except books about fortune-telling, farming, medicine, and the history of the emperor's family. In addition, anyone talking about certain banned books would be put to death. The collected books were burned, and only one or two copies of each book was kept. These copies went into the imperial libraries in Zhanyang. People who did not agree to give up their books were severely punished. Some were killed, and others were sent to build the Great Wall for no pay. Many scholars died building the wall. There is also a story about 460 scholars who kept their books. The emperor was so angry at them that instead of sending them to the Great Wall, he had them burned alive. The problem with this story is that it was written by an official of the Han Dynasty. The Han Dynasty followed the Qin Dynasty, and it can be expected that the author would write about the Qin Dynasty in a negative way. There is no direct evidence of scholars being burned alive. A Fabulous Tomb The emperor built a fabulous tomb for himself. It is a giant underground room that is guarded by no less than 8,000 terracotta warriors. Historians of the time wrote that 700,000 men had worked on the emperor's tomb. They wrote that the tomb has a model of the empire with its famous buildings and mountains. In addition, it has models of China's rivers made of a flowing metal called mercury. The ceiling shows the moon, stars, and planets made of gold and jewels. However, the tomb remains sealed. 
No one knows what is inside yet. The Trick In the year 210 BC, the emperor was traveling with one of his sons, Huhai. They traveled together in a big group of wagons and carriages with ministers, many servants, and soldiers. The emperor became ill. Aware that he would die soon, he wrote a letter to his older son, Fusu. He told Fusu to come back to the capital so that Fusu could become the new emperor. Zhao Gao was one of the emperor's ministers. The emperor gave the letter to Zhao Gao and told him to give the letter to a messenger who would take the letter to Fusu. But Zhao Gao did not give the emperor's letter to a messenger. Instead, Zhao Gao, Li Shi, and Hu Hai wrote two fake letters and said that these letters were from the emperor. The first letter was for Fusu and an important military commander. It said that they should both kill themselves. The second letter was for some ministers in the capital. It said that Hu Hai should become emperor after Qin died. Far from home and without knowing the truth, Fusu killed himself. After the emperor died, Zhao Gao, Li Shi, and Hu Hai did not want anyone else to know that the emperor had died. Their big group of wagons and carriages continued toward the capital as if nothing had happened. Servants brought food to the emperor's carriage, so it looked like the emperor was still alive. Zhao Gao did not want anyone to smell the emperor's dead body, so he kept a cart full of dried fish next to the emperor's carriage. Burying His Father At last, the group of wagons arrived at Xianyang, the capital. Hu Hai became Emperor Qin Er Shi. He buried his father in the fabulous tomb that had been built. The workers who had built the tomb had to stay inside it too. Qin Er Shi thought that these workers might tell other people and help them to steal the gold and jewels inside the tomb. Qin Er Shi sealed the tomb shut with the workers inside. The Second Emperor After the death of Qin Shi Huang, the Qin dynasty lasted only three more years. The new emperor, Qin Er Shi, was not a strong ruler. He allowed Zhao Gao, his old tutor, to make all of his decisions. Under Qin Er Shi's rule, the people were unhappy. They revolted and fled. Rulers from neighboring areas began attacking the empire. In the end, Zhao Gao turned against Qin Er Shi and forced Qin Er Shi to commit suicide. The End of the Qin Dynasty The next Qin ruler was just a king, not an emperor, because he could not control the empire. His name was Ji Ying, and he ruled for only 46 days. The rebellion continued, and a rebel general, Zhang Yu, destroyed Zhang Yang and killed Ji Ying and his family. When Zhang Yu destroyed Zhang Yang, he burned the imperial libraries. These libraries had the last two copies of all the books that the first emperor had burned. Historians also wrote that this general ruined the fabulous tomb of the first emperor. The Army of Terracotta Warriors In 1974, farmers uncovered the famous terracotta warriors by accident. While digging a well, they found a life-size clay soldier ready for battle. Today, around two million people visit the warriors every year. Along with warriors, there are statues of horses, birds, musicians, weapons, and even carriages. The Mystery of the First Emperor's Tomb What about the rest of Qin Shi Huang's fabulous tomb? When Zhang Yu ruined it, did he take all the gold, silver, and jewels out? Thanks to the lucky find of the farmers, we know where Qin Shi Huang's tomb is. We can easily see the outside of it. However, scientists have not opened the tomb because they do not want to damage anything inside. For this reason, the question remains, what is inside? Scientists have found mercury in the earth around the tomb. Maybe the rivers of mercury are there. 
Maybe scientists will open the tomb and find a ceiling of stars and planets made of gold and jewels. Good people and bad people in history. When we think about history, we must remember that history is made by humans, and no person is all good or all bad. We must also remember that people will do terrible things for power. When we enjoy visits to places to see the Great Wall of China or the army of terracotta warriors, we should remember the death and suffering that made these great cultural treasures. By studying good and bad people in history, we can learn better ways to treat people. We can also learn better ways to live and behave.